Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Myguron Moyarl, which is a really weird, <laughs> it's just like Myron and Carl mixed together. I don't know. But aside from the name, which I'm not here to review, the knife is spectacular. Uh, Myguron finally had an absolute mega home run, which they've done, you know, with the, it was, um, the, um, the Valona that I handled, um, originally. But that's a big knife, right? But that's the one that got me really paying attention to Myguron. And I've been waiting and they've had a lot of really good knives, some B plus, A minus designs. Their pricing has always been excellent, but I knew I was like, one of these days they're going to come out with this amazing, either a premium or an amazing budget knife and the Moyaro is it. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, this is a knife that I'm gonna recommend. This is a knife that I think you should buy, which I try to be very careful about saying at the beginning of reviews. I've gotten substantially more picky as time has gone on, but spoiler alert, this is gonna be a really, really good review. This knife is really inexpensive for what it is. It has some amazing attributes, uh, and I'm, I'm going to recommend it. So I'm gonna link it down below. It comes in a couple of different um, configurations, but I'll link it so you guys can check it out. Thanks so much to Migron for sending this in. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. As it sits, this is one of my favorite budget knives of 2023. And I mean that. But let's go ahead and do the review for the people who want to stay and listen. Overall length is coming in at seven and a half inches. It really does feel larger than that, especially ergonomically, which we'll get into. Blade length is three and a quarter. Cutting edge is coming in at about 2.75, thanks to a very large forward joil area. How about some size comparisons? Just a few up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. You can see here, it is a little bigger than the Rat 2 uh, in terms of length, but definitely larger in terms of just presence and overall size. How about up against, uh, let's do the Spyderco Para 3. There we go. Very Para 3 size knife. How about up against the Civivi Elementum? Uh, how about up against the CJRB Pyrite? These are other excellent options uh, for um, EDC. And how about the Benchmade Bugout? And let's do the um, uh, Benchmade Group Tiller, in this case, the Rehoga. I'm realizing I did everything except for the PM2. <laughs> let's do the PM2. <laughs> Up against the Spider Go PM2. There you go. Okay. How's the action on this guy? It's very good. This is super, super, just stupidly easy to manipulate. It's got everything in the place that you'd want, right? Uh, the liner lock is very easy to access, very easy to actuate. There's no, you know, I mean, the the space, you know, that contacts your thumb, if you want to do like a one finger or one hand disengagement, is the enormous unsharpened portion of the forward choil. Uh, so manipulation is just like second nature. Flicking it out because they've made the back of this hole a little wider. Ah, man, it's one of the most satisfying. I, they've got it placed exactly right. Reverse flicking it, no problem. The detents tuned correctly. These scales are fairly thick, and I will say they could have scalloped this, and it would have made it just a hair better, but you know what? I don't even care. It's just great the way that it is. It's just exactly what you want it to be. The action is phenomenal and it does run on bearings. So um, let's go ahead and do carry profile. Thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. As I stated, it is a little bit on the thick side and that's because they've done full steel liners and they've done a fairly thick piece of G10 up here. It didn't need to be this thick, but it does fill out the hand a little bit. Like if you've ever handled this, the Pyrite and thought, I like the Ergos, it just feels a little bit thin. This is the answer, right? It's a bit more robust feeling. Fills out the hand and the edges are nicely knocked down, but it is thicker than the Para 3, so we gotta keep that in mind. Length and height up against the PM2 and the Para 3. This guy is about the same overall length closed as the Para 3, shorter than the PM2, but not nearly as tall as either at the, on the, you know, versus the hump. How about, um, let's do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use in this channel. We have a T8 for the pivot, we also have T8 for the body screws. Awesome. T6, no, I'm wrong. T8 for the pocket clip screws. 
and nailed it, right? Look at that. You can even mount the pocket clip for left-handed carry. Nice. Minimal hardware, the right size, very easy to take apart, very simple construction, perfect. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Did I, I throw my scale to the moon in between videos? It's so funny because there's, there's really only so many places that my scale can go. There it is, I turned it up sideways. Of course, my, my subconscious is idiot. My subconscious is idiot. <laughs> okay, we gotta move on here. Weight comes in at four ounces, basically. So uh, a little over that mark, but four ounces is, has, has never traditionally been a deal breaker weight. Even at this size, a seven and a half inch knife with a 3.25 inch cutting edge, the ratios are not perfect, but they're also not bad. This is pretty much just the general weight of a pocket knife, right? Uh, the uh, balance here is a little bit butt heavy. It's more towards right the back of this initial choil area, but in hand, you're not really gonna notice that. Balance is only something that a few people care about. I only do it just because it's something that a few people care about. It's like kind of a four-year information thing. Let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness on this knife. I'm gonna say that looks like 120, maybe 125. We'll see. Uh, one it says 122, 122 thousandths, okay. Materials. Peel ply texture G10 and steel for the liners, obviously. Uh, we have a G10 backspacer. We have a titanium milled pocket clip. As far as I can tell, a titanium pivot collar as well. And then we have PVD coated 14C28N. Wow. Yeah. You probably have a price in your head. If you haven't gone and looked at the price yet, go look at it. It's really impressive. <laughs> That's nice. Um, they really did an excellent job there with the materials and the pricing and, um, you know, going out of their way with the coating. And I think there's a non-coated version of this too, but it's, it's really I, it's the same price, I think, um, unless I'm mistaken. But either way, really impressive. This version of the knife looks awesome. Um, so yeah, I think we can go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes here. Guess what I'm going to compliment? The, uh, yeah, you're right, the, the ergonomics. Wow, yeah. Uh, this sort of... Um, Ergonomic design is is one that's captured by many knives, right? This looks like a lot of different things. You know, some people are going to look at this and think it, it almost looks like a Spyderco and a Strider, right? Or it's like a Spyderco and a Strider and the CKF Rotten Evo, but miniaturized. Um, it, it, yeah, kind of. Uh, though that ergonomic profile works, and this works extremely well. You can show there's so much room for a seven and a half inch knife. There's so much room to get your hand exactly where you want it. The only thing that's really missing here is a little bit of jimping. I mean, honestly, had they thinned these scales down, put jimping right here, um, and scalloped this area to give slightly more access to the thumb hole, I don't know. I think my brain might explode. Um, but I, I can't really complain about those things. I mean, that's just the the nitpicky design reviewer in me. That It's like I, I have to, right? But again... I can let those things slide because they're not really, th none of those things are big deals. And again, we're looking at something that is sub $50, um, which if I hadn't said the price yet, I mean, it's, that's pretty spectacular. Uh, there's a lot of other sub $50 knives out there that just don't come anywhere close in terms of like the effort that was involved with this. Yes, it's made in China, but come on. I mean, how many other knives out there can you say are really that there's this much effort? The, the fit and finish of these things is insane. If you've never handled a Migron, it's apparent the moment you take it out of the box how much they care about the quality of their products. It's really, really nice. And they're just like, yeah, you know what? Have a titanium pocket clip too. These are things that sometimes cost 20 bucks by themselves, right? Even the, the, even when they're made in China. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. They just put their logo on the pivot. Uh, you don't have to see anything on the blade except 14C28N, but again, ergonomically very comfortable. Either back here, which is still a full four finger grip or choked up. At least four finger if your hands are about my size or an XL glove. Um, so n normal guy hands, I guess. Uh, but uh, the pocket clip is, you know, it's an ambidextrous pocket clip, um, so you can mount it for left or right-handed carry. Very easy to manipulate this with the left hand, you know, even though it is a right-handed liner lock. Just great. The edge of those holes are all knocked down. We have kind of, 
kind of a hinder or slicer grind, right? Where the this just sort of carries up and it's fully flat ground out in this area. We have a little bit of a flat right here, but not much. The actual cutting edge is nice and thin, comes out to a nice tip. This is gonna be a fantastic EDC blade. Um, it uh, it doesn't have like an extra sharpening choil to get caught up in anything and there's nothing in the blade path. Just really great. Like just, just really, really great. The blade is awesome. Seating of the hardware, everything is just perfect. There are no fit and finish issues on this knife anywhere. They did a simple peel ply texturing on the uh, G10, which is great. It's not super duper grippy, but it does provide traction um, and won't change if it's wet or, you know, if you get sweaty or anything. I mean, maybe a little bit, but it's not like micarta, right? Um, so that's fine. It's not aggressive enough that it's going to cause the pocket to fray your pants immediately. I mean, maybe like over over time, you know, if you carry this knife every single day for a couple of years and you keep wearing the same pants, maybe, right? But it'll take a while. Um, there is no lanyard hole, so sorry lanyard people, they just don't, they couldn't be bothered. Um, the pocket clip is also slightly mounted below one of the screw positions, which is weird, but it's not too bad. And I mean, even the position of the knife is what I'd call medium depth, which is not bad. Some people prefer medium depth over um, like a deep carry. The only thing in my opinion that's bad is shallow carry, right? And sometimes tactical couch ninjas will tell you that shallow carry is great for when you're fighting off, you know, like the terrorist clowns behind Walgreens or whatever. Um, but uh, for, you know, the, the, rest, the, the, the rest of the 7 billion people on the planet who don't deal with that, um, a medium depth to deep uh, depth is good because it keeps the knife completely and totally in your pocket and not hanging out, right? Um, it's just weird. I, I know. I know I'm going to get... Go down in the comments. There's going to be at least one super entertaining comment down there. Just venture on down there, guys. <laughs> the pocket clip length is all right. Um, maybe it, it could be a little shorter, but you know, not that big of a deal. The edges are all nicely knocked down and it's a simple clip, right? It's, there's not, nothing crazy going on here, but it is milled. It's not stamped out. Nice blue anno, which matches the pivot collar. And that's fine. We have a stop pin located in its traditional position. A little bit of shouldering here. No blade play up, down, left or right. No lock stick, no double clutch, no pivot lash. Extremely smooth and consistent for the action. The D10 is tuned perfectly for the opening style that we've got here. And we also have perfect centering. This is a $48 knife, maybe $49. I mean, what? Yeah, this is recommendable. Uh, this is uh, extremely nice. Uh, I love that it's, uh, you know, a liner lock and not a frame lock. Um, they could make a button lock version of this and it would do just as well. In fact, that's what I'm going to suggest um, because some people just like the button lock. Micron needs to do a button lock, right? They're, they're one of the only, po you know, fairly popular companies right now, at least on my channel, that is not doing a button lock. But this is fine. The liner lock is fine. For people who prefer a liner lock, this is it, right? If you've been looking for kind of like your one and done budget EDC knife of 2023, this is it. In fact, this compared to everything that I've ever reviewed on this channel, this is one of the most preferable budget knives I've ever reviewed. I mean, it is really, really good. I honestly think this is a home run from Migron. But, you know, if Migron is looking for tips on how to make this even more home runny, <laughs> then, yeah, scallop this area here. Nest your liners. Um, that would be great. And if not, if that adds too much cost to it because you're trying to keep it down. Thin up the G10. I think the G10 is a little bit thick. It is. It does pleasantly fill fill the hand, and some people are gonna like that. But I think we could knock this down just a bit, right? Not too much, but but just a bit. Um, scallop these areas here, and then this knife definitely needed just a little bit of jimping because this is a knife that people are gonna take out and use, and I think they would prefer to have their you know thumb kind of lock in and and have a little traction there. But man, what an excellent design. Uh, I also hate the name, but who cares, right? Migron Moyarl is just a weird, you know, it's like every time I say, you know, that brand of cigarettes, Marlboro, right? It just makes my mouth feel weird. I, I don't know why, but <laughs> whatever. That's, that's about it. This is extremely recommendable. It's going to go on my cheap knives I like playlist, and it's going to go on my um, recommended knives playlist. I highly recommend this knife. I think the vast majority of people will very much love this. I didn't really go into much detail about the blade steel. So if you're new, 14C28N is one of the best 
compositions that you can get under $100. So the fact that it is half of that is amazing. It is very well balanced, good edge retention, good toughness, easy to sharpen up, and it is stainless, which is only further, you know, the, the ability of the stainlessness of this blade is only furthered by the fact that it has a PVD coating on it. Very, very good stuff from Migron. I think that's really all that needs to be said here. Extremely recommendable. It will be linked down in the description of this video. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.